So <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind as we um, are doing these DEDL examples is that each example has a few new things dealing with the Android framework that we haven't addressed before. And in my mind, that's the real important stuff. In other words, um, think of the Twitter search. Um, in my mind, what was important about the Twitter search was, number one, it was a had the recycle view that had a data adapter associated with it. That was one of the main things that was important about that. And the other thing that was important about that was that it had uh, a different uh, activity. It had two activities. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I think there was options and a menu, and you know, there might be a couple of minor points, but those are the main things. That's more important than, than the details of the Twitter search, all right, uh, in my mind. So we're going to review um, to see, um, you know, we're going to review and we're going to see some cool programming things, but keep your eyes sort of on the bigger issues that we're addressing with each of these assignments, or not assignments, but um, each of these uh, DEDL examples. Because I have mixed feelings about these. Uh, I think they're good. I think each one sort of adds something to the mix of things that we've talked about so far. But sometimes the details of them get a little long and, and convoluted. And I guess it's important to look at. Um, but really, the big picture, you don't want to lose track of. So if we're going to review the flag quiz, um, one of the things I did between now and then was I created a tablet layout. All right. Today, if, if I could talk about the thing that's important today, it is the fragments that are involved. And let's review what I mean by, the, by fragments. So we'll start out by revisiting the layout XML. And we'll look at some of the classes involved as well. We'll see it on the screen, and then we'll look more in detail about the code. If we look at our activity main, We have essentially sort of a framework that includes the content main. And we can't see that because, because why? Oh, I know why because I have not dragged that to the other screen. Yeah, there we go. All right. Our activity main consists of header stuff, app bar layout, toolbar, and it has a content main. So we have an include file here. Think of an include file, just like a include file in PHP, where we sort of paste in um, the code from the other file. And in our case, our content main is, we have two of them. One contains a fragment, and one contains two fragments. Think of a, frag, a, a fragment as like uh, an application piece. In our case, the two fragments are the settings and the game itself. And by breaking them down into fragments, we, can, we have more flexibility on how to present it. All right? Because we can plop those fragments in, and if we have a bigger screen, we can plop more of those fragments into our screen. So for example, if we run this on a regular phone, all right, like this, we are using 
using the activity main and content main, which has simply one fragment. So all we see is a game. If we click settings, it brings up a different fragment within that layout. And if we click backwards, we go back. So those are our two fragments. One for the game, one for the settings. All right? And on a screen like this that isn't particularly big, it presents them one at a time. So you can go between settings and the game itself. In other words, Activity Main has an include to include Content Main. Well, Content Main, for a regular old phone, is this guy, which only holds the one fragment. Okay? Now, if we're on a bigger tablet, and we are oriented landscape, that's what this is. We get two of them. Whoops. And they're fragments that we lay side by side. So when we run this, if my device is set to a tablet, we'll see the settings right next to the game. So let's run this, but we'll run it for a tablet. So I'll pick this guy instead, which is a tablet. And here we are, oriented horizontally. Just thinking about it for a minute. That's what we have. We have the two fragments sitting side by side. So think of a fragment as a piece of an application. All right? And we can then do cool things with the layout. So if we have enough space, we can put two fragments on our screen. If we don't have enough space, we can just put one of them. So that is sort of the punchline to this. This is why we go through all this trouble. All right? So let's take a look at the code that maintains this and, and makes it happen. One thing I do want to mention, I had trouble at first rotating the screen and having it work. Notice what happens when I rotate the screen. It goes into the, it's no longer in landscape mode, so I don't get that second view. I don't get the second fragment side by side. Because remember, the resource qualifier for this is not only a certain width of the screen, but a, uh, that you're in landscape mode. What you have to do to make rotating the screen work is be sure you go into settings and select, what was that, under, auto-rotate screen. The first two things that I emulated, I did not have auto-rotate screen um, enabled. So I could sit there and rotate them all day. So if I turn that off, for example, if I run this app again, doesn't matter if I rotate it. Because without auto rotate screen go on, it's like I didn't rotate it. I rotate it, but it didn't have an impact. So make sure you go into, I also have a hard time with the settings with my two finger swipes and stuff.
accessibility. No. Display. So now we should be back to business with the rotating. So if you want to test something that requires a different layout for landscape, be sure that the auto-rotate setting is on. Now if we go and rotate it, boom, it actually rotates it, and it shows us that. So we've seen in the XML how that happens. We have our activity main, which simply has an include file. Our include file depends on the size, the width, and the orientation of the screen. If it's oriented horizontally and it's above a certain width, you get this guy that has two fragments side by side. Otherwise, you get one fragment. Each fragment has its own XML. We have a linear layout for the main fragment. Notice how many buttons does it have? Looks to me like it has eight buttons. That way, no matter what we select for number of choices, it's not really adding. Oops. It's not really adding anything to it. It's simply making that row of buttons visible and invisible. All right. So let's look at the quiz. We also have a fragment for the settings. Fragment for the settings. This is the XML for the settings. which is pretty much the same as the XML for the activity main. All right, anyhow, let's look at the code. Notice that we have two activities here. We have a main activity and a settings activity. Remember, uh, an activity is presenting the user one thing at a time for them to do. And we also have a settings and activity fragment. So let's look at the main activity. When this fires up, I'm going to only focus on the stuff relating to the activities and fragments. All right, I'm going to try to isolate the other code and not worry about it. Maybe say a word or two, but not spend a lot of time talking about it. All right, we're grabbing the screen size and we're testing to see if this is a tablet or not. And we set phone device to true or false based on whether it is a tablet. We can use a resource qualifier to handle the GUI and to switch between these two things. But there's still some code that we want to have that's a little different, depending on whether we're on a tablet or a phone. So we're actually setting a flag that says phone device. All right? Now, if we're running on a phone device, only allow portrait orientation. So. After we do this test to see if it has a large or extra large screen, if that is true, then we set phone device to false. Otherwise, phone device defaulted to true. And we set it and we lock it to the screen orientation being portrait. So it doesn't matter how we turn our phone then. All right? It's going to be locked in a portrait mode and it's not going to use the landscape, landscape uh, setting. If preference is changed, we go in and 
we um, restart the quiz. When we restart the quiz, we call some methods on the quiz fragment. Notice how we have a find fragment by ID. Works very similar to the find view by ID. All right. Now, if we look at this code, this code works regardless of what layout we are in. Right? Because if we are in phone layout and we are using activity main and bringing in content main, the ID for that is quiz fragment. So if we're using the layout that only has one fragment, this line of code is going to find it, right? Because it's called quiz fragment. It's also called quiz fragment in the other one as well. Quiz fragment. Settings activity fragment. So this code doesn't really need to check what mode we're in, whether we're in phone mode or tablet mode. It just works because both of the layouts, whether you're phone or in, in tablet, have something called quiz fragment. item selected, we're going to create a new intent to start the settings activity. Okay. What is that? That is an on, an on item, an options item selected in the menus items. When does that get invoked? Well, if you notice, notice there's no setting here in the quiz fragment. There's no um, choice for settings here on the quiz fragment when we're in two fragment view. However, if we run this on a phone, then we have an option here to go into settings. And if we click that, that starts the settings activity. Let's look at the layout and let's see how this happens. The main activity fragment is responsible for everything associated with the quiz. I'm trying to see because I don't see
I don't see why the utilities gear appears on the one and not the other. Here we go. Create the option menu. If the orientation is portrait mode, it gets a menu inflator, all right, from menu main. There we go. And adds our icon for settings. So on create options menu, that's why in one fragment mode, we see the little gear for settings, and in two fragment mode, we don't. We don't need it in two fragment mode because the settings are uh, side by side with the game itself. Whereas in one fragment mode, we need to get to that second thing. So we create it, and somewhere, in here. When the option is changed, there we go, we start our activity preference intent. And what does that do? That calls the settings activity class. And that's this one here. So let's let's follow this through from both perspectives. All right. The simple one in this case is when in the two fragment view. For the two fragment view, when we are running on a tablet. There's no need for a menu, right? Because all your options are there. The game's there and the settings are there. So there's no need for there to be an options button on the menu. Right? No need for the options. The options are right here. All right? So, none of that code that I was talking about a minute ago is relevant here. Now, we run it again, and we are on a phone this time. side by side, we do have a gear up here. So let's follow through how that gear gets put there and how clicking that gear gets handled. All right. Goes back to the start of this where we look and we do testing to determine what kind of device it is. And if it's a phone device, if it's not a tablet device, it's a phone, and we lock it down to being oriented in portrait mode. Okay. 
We then have on create options menu where this guy's option menu gets created. What's the option menu? Well, that's that menu on the top of the, on the top up here. We check the orientation. If the orientation is portrait mode, which could be a phone or it could be a tablet in portrait mode. Because if I put this guy and rotate it, boom, I get the gear. So if we're in portrait mode, which either means that we're a phone or a tablet in portrait mode, then I inflate the menu, all right, and add that to the, the menu bar, the toolbar. The menu is contained here, and it contains one thing. The thing that has the gear on it with the title of settings and associated with it is the action of starting off the settings. That's the ID we give it. So this is a code that makes the gear appear and disappear. So the gear appears if we are in portrait mode or, well, it appears if we're in full portrait mode. And if we're on a phone, no matter what, we're in portrait mode. All right? <coughs> this F statement will be false only if we are in a tablet that is not in portrait mode, that's in landscape mode. So, we now have, for our menu, an option item selected. Now, we only have one choice for settings, right? If they click settings, they click this option, we are going to start a new intent that is going to start our preferences. In other words, our settings. So we create a new intent. What activity do we want? We want the section settings activity. And then we go and we invoke and start up that activity. So if we click that gear, which only appears if we're in portrait mode, we're going to start up this activity. And what does this activity do? This activity loads activity settings, which is much like the activity main, in that it has a simple layout. and includes the content settings. And again, the content settings, since we know we can only get to this code if we're in portrait mode, that's going to be the, the content main for this, the one fragment option. We're in settings activity now, and we're good to go. like where it saves the settings and all that happens in the settings activity fragment. And this creates a preference GUI from the preferences XML in questions about that.
let's let's try to do that. Let's try to do that real quick. Let's I'm trying to think. What would be a good one to open? Let's open this guy. not let's go and let's do exactly what you suggested and start a brand new one file new new project my application all we want to do is create a new create a menu for this guy right yeah I'd like to see right you start an empty project how would you add a menu okay let's start an empty thing new Generate layout, sure. Finish. All right. All right. No menu, nothing up our sleeves. All right. Let's run this. Should get like our little hello world screen. And there we go. There's a hello world screen. So let's add a menu to it. All right. XML over. Paste. Okay, so there's my menu XML. settings. All right, there's our menu. We copy that. Do I believe is because. 
because these are both the same activity, all I need to do is call over, pull over the on create options menu. orientation guy, so I will delete that code, and I'll always inflate the menu. Okay, so let's run this and see what we get. put the white. Yeah, it's just missing. So let's, well, nothing, because we haven't defined anything yet. So let's do Android or, what was it, Android fill Do you have to put like a pound sign or something yeah. before? So. Let's go do an undo. So I should be able to do pound sign all Fs.
be this over. An option item select. some kind of activity here, but we could say new intent. running two emulators is dogging it. to LC's homepage.
anyhow, you get the idea. Essentially, as long as it's an app uh, compat activity, um, the hooks for the menu are there. You just need to override the default on create menu. What were the methods? On option item selected and um, on create options menu. XML of what we and want. That's where it the menu from, so that's where it the menu right. So you could put multiple um, items on the menu, yeah. So, so it works pretty well. Right. Okay. Right, thank you. All right. Next time we'll review the creation of activities and then spend more time looking at the code. All right. That's all I have. We'll see you in lab. Would you be willing to post that what you just did? Would I be willing to post that? Any creation? Yeah. I think I'd like to read through that. I think. Yeah. yeah, let me. What did I call it? My application. Okay. And where is it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll post that. That's sort of the disadvantage of the Dito applications is they're big and it's hard to isolate just on like one little piece of it. I agree with that. Yeah. Be nice to have smaller, uh, okay. I'll I'll definitely keep that in mind and that's sort of what I tried to do when we had trouble with the uh, not when we had trouble but when we reviewed the recycler view, I created something that just did a recycler view. Well, this will just do a menu. All right, and we I'll keep that in mind as we go forward. There is a way you, you start with a 